Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Elizabeth Bobby and your KMIR 6 News at 10 starts right now. The rise in residential burglaries has Indio police looking at science to curb crime. Reporter Anthony Alvarez tonight shows us how it's not just hoodlums on the prowl. It's the average kid next door. Our Elizabeth Bowlby and spent the day at the conference and joins us live now from the Renaissance Esmeralda in Indian Wells with the very latest. Good evening, Elizabeth. Thank you, Gino. Today's discussions were based on the health problems facing our country, primarily those that are preventable, like obesity and type 2 diabetes. The most outstanding messages of today were educate and move more and eat less. The newly named Humana Challenge, formerly the Bob Hope Classic, began with talks on ways to make America healthier and a panel of well-known faces led by one of the most recognized and respected men in the world, former President Bill Clinton, a longtime friend of the late Bob Hope. We hope that the work that we're doing with Humana and the PGA Tour to carry on Bob Hope's legacy of service and giving back will give us a tournament that has the goal of encouraging every single person to make a personal commitment to lifelong wellness and to be involved with family and community to encourage healthy living in others. Clinton moderated the discussion between health and fitness experts about the best ways to cure America's obesity problem, one of the biggest health concerns facing our nation. One in two Americans have either prediabetes or diabetes. This is a problem that's not going away. They are startling statistics, and the problem is even worse in impoverished communities. Educate. If the government does its part, the private sector does its part, the public sector does its part, individuals do their part, churches and community organizations do their part, we can lick this problem. Fitness guru Jillian Michaels encouraged Americans to get moving. You do have the ability to change things. And that just means that you need to get more creative, more inventive, and more involved. We spoke to Michaels one-on-one -on -one and asked her how Americans can get motivated to change their unhealthy lifestyles. For any lasting motivation, you have to identify your reasons. Because getting healthy, it's accessible, it's doable. I didn't say it was easy. It has to be worth it. So what are the reasons that you want to change? Identify your why and allow that to motivate you. NBC News chief health correspondent, who also spoke at the conference, says obesity is the biggest health problem facing Americans, but believes it is reversible. There is a real chance to make a difference, but it goes back to the real simple things in life. You have to eat well and make that good food affordable to people. You have to get outside, and in this area, there's no excuse not to. And frankly, you have to unplug from all the technological stuff that we're stuck with. Simple advice that can prevent some very serious diseases. President Clinton also spoke to the audience today about his friend, the legendary Bob Hope. Clinton said he became friends with Hope back in 1979 when Hope entertained students at the University of Arkansas and Clinton was then a young governor. Their friendship lasted over the years and the president told the crowd he played golf with Hope in Washington, D.C. when he was president and Hope was then 95 years old. Hope was still walking the course at that age, he said, and credited his health and longevity to walking at least an hour every day, uh, no matter what. So some very good advice there. And with the weather out here as it was today, it was absolutely perfect, a perfect day to get outside and keep moving. That's exactly what many people did out here at the lawn uh, at the uh, Renaissance Esmeralda Resort in Indian Wells. The workout was led by Jillian Michaels, who you probably recognize from The Biggest Loser on NBC. She had the group working out, raising their heart rates with with jumps and push-ups and lunges. It was a great workout for those who made it out here bright and early at 7.45 this morning. Gino, we looked for you out here. We didn't see you. I was sure you were going to be here. I know how much you love exercise. Was there a memo or something that I missed? Because uh, had I known. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, no. We, we discussed that yesterday. Remember? No, 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 no. I'm <laughs> sure had I known about it, I would have been out there with Jillian right. bright and early doing no the, doubt, no the, doubt. the exercise that I love so. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of weather, it was gorgeous today. While the East Coast prepares for Hurricane Irene's arrival, we are dealing with another day of extreme heat and humidity here in the Coachella Valley as monsoon moisture has returned. We've already seen some lightning out there tonight and looks like rain may be on its way. Meteorologist Brian Schofield standing by with a check of your first forecast tonight. Brian.
In Los Angeles, what's being called Carmageddon has finally begun. The 405 freeway, one of the busiest highways in the world, is being shut down for the next two and a half days. That's prompting doomsday style warnings about the already bad LA traffic becoming even worse. What you're looking at right here is a live picture of the 405. As you can see, uh, very few cars headed down the freeway at this point, although it ha has been shut down since 7 o'clock. Not sure why there are any cars on there at all at this point. KMIR 6's Gina Kim has the latest. That was Jay Gray reporting. Casey Anthony remains in custody this evening. Sentencing is set for Thursday morning on the four guilty charges with the very real possibility that she could be out and free by Thursday afternoon. KMIR 6 legal analyst John Patrick Jolin joins us live in studio tonight with more on today's stunning verdict in Orlando. Welcome, John. Thank you for being with us. Thank now, you, you predicted this last week saying there just wasn't enough evidence to <clears throat> convict Casey. Do you think that's assuming the, what the jurors thought I as well? I think that's what happened. I'm amazed that it happened because she was painted as such a despicable person, and she probably is based on what we hear about her conduct after the child was dead. But the evidence doesn't what just wasn't there to show that she actually did the killing of the child. And that kind of distinction is very difficult for jurors to make, but they made it clearly in Florida. Why are so many people shocked about this after hearing the evidence and there was no smoking gun here? Well, they're shocked about it because you hear about her partying, about not reporting this, about acting like she had a job at Universal when she didn't, and all the other lies that she got convicted of, by the way. And that sort of paints a picture of an awful person. And the danger in this kind of a case is sometimes an awful person can be so disliked by the jury that sometimes they overlook the law and the requirements of the law. In this case, that didn't happen. The jury said, you did not prove that she killed her daughter. She must be found not guilty on the top three counts. Do you think she'll serve any jail time or will the three years she's already been in jail serve as time already spent for the charges that she was found guilty well, of? Well, the maximum sentence she can get is four years for the four counts and she's already spent three years in jail and with the good time work time credit and credit time served, I have a feeling that she's going to be walking out of the, the jail on Thursday after the sentencing. What's next for her then and the family? Well, that's a good question. It doesn't sound like she and the family are going to have a reunion uh, based on the statement that was released by the family and a lot of people have expressed concern for her safety when she comes out. I have a feeling there's very few places she can go in the world where she won't be known and it will be quite some time before this thing sort of calms down in her life. Do you think she's going to be able to make money off of this? Will she have a book deal? Will she be on reality TV? I would say that there is a 100% guarantee that she'll have a book deal. And we are following breaking news for you tonight. A major brush fire is burning tonight in San Bernardino County. The Kinwood fire is burning along north of Interstate 15 and the 215 freeway in the Cajon Pass. The fire erupted around 1 o'clock and has charred already over 250 acres. At least two structures have been destroyed. This is a live look right now at that fire. Nearly 500 firefighters are fighting the blaze on the ground and from the air. Traffic has been affected. Just two of the five northbound lanes of Interstate 15 are open at this hour. There is a long backup along the 15 freeway. No word yet tonight on how this fire started or when it will be brought under control. It's sometimes the little things we take for granted. Even without health insurance, we have resources in the United States that help us live life healthier and easier should we become sick or need assistance. In other countries, that's not the case. Tonight, I show you how something as simple as a wheelchair can change lives. I recently traveled to Nicaragua with the Rancho Mirage-based International Medical Alliance and watched them make a difference for people who otherwise had no hope. In a country as poor as Nicaragua, what we here in the United States consider basic life necessities can be hard to come by. The typical monthly wage for a farm worker is about $30. That's working sun up to sun down. And that's if a person can find work. Many others make their living selling what they can or begging on the streets. It's a nation of very poor people, many of whom have no access to health care or the financial means to afford it. The International Medical Alliance, a group of doctors, nurses and volunteers, is working to change that. The group was founded by Inez Allen, a woman with a heart of epic proportions. Inez gives her heart, soul and sweat to helping others who are less fortunate. In this town in Esteli, Nicaragua, Inez has made it her mission to get medical care to those who need it. And there are thousands who do. While all these people are treated for whatever ailments they have, 
Inez and her IMA group found something as simple as a wheelchair could change lives. Wheelchairs in Nicaragua cost about $250 each, and on a salary of $30 a month or less, they become unattainable for people like this woman we found. She has severe rheumatoid arthritis and can't walk. She has two ways of getting around. She can get around on horseback, and that's usually the way she gets around if she's going to go a long distance, or her husband carries her. But she's almost as big as her, her husband. And so to see them walking down the street, I mean, it's, you can imagine somebody who's 40 years old carrying his wife, who's almost the same size. It, it's quite a spectacle to see. So, How long has she been like that? 15 years. And, and they're poor. Um, he works as a farmer or doing field work, uh, mainly with um, corn and beans. And they're a very poor family. They live in a rural area. They have three kids. And they've never had the means of being able to purchase a, a wheelchair. Until the generous IMA volunteers stepped in. The group took up donations amongst themselves and... Two brand new chairs I bought at the Walkers. And I bought uh, three wheelchairs that are used chairs for that. Take a look at the only chair the hospital had on hand. It was in shreds, tattered and torn, and stained with blood. This woman's life was drastically changed forever by the seemingly simple but expensive invention. This mother also received a wheelchair from IMA for her son, Fernando. He is 12 years old and he has cerebral palsy and he does sit and walk so the mom carries him everywhere. He is not a little child. Even though Fernando can't talk, you can see how happy he is getting a wheelchair. Will he be able to wheel himself in this? Probably not because of the cerebral palsy. He has movements that don't coordinate, so he's going to be dependent on the mom still to pull, push him around. But at least it'll save her back and it'll be more functional for her and him. She says Fernando and his mom leave the hospital happy, knowing their stresses have eased up at least just a little for now. And it's all thanks to people who they'd never met before, people who care about them and have come all this way just to help. For more information on the organization or how you can help, log on to our website, KMIR6.com. And also coming up new tonight at 6 o'clock, the story of an elderly woman in Nicaragua who was left to die because her family couldn't afford to take care of her any longer. You'll see how the International Medical Alliance helped her. And it was amazing to see going to Nicaragua and really seeing the yeah. level of poverty down there. I mean, it's just something that you wouldn't even imagine. Living on $30 a month just really puts things in perspective, yeah. I will say. Amazing story. All right, Brian Schofield's next.